This printer comes pre-installed with the most popular Ender 3 upgrades, like dual-axis lead screws, a filament runout detector, automatic bed leveling, a direct drive extruder. It even has a magnetic spring steel build tray. So you're getting five pretty major upgrades right off the bat. So let's get started with the unboxing. Right on the top you can see one of the major improvements in this printer, and that's the hot end. It comes with a CR touch which is used for automatic bed leveling. This fan looks slightly beefier than the one that's found on the Ender 3 V2. They're using a pancake stepper motor that's about half the size of the normal extruder stepper motor. There's a gear up at the top for manual feeding and unloading, and there's a lever here that makes it really easy to engage and disengage the extruder gears. There's a nice connector up top, and this carries all the power and signal lines to the print head. On one side we have the blower fan, and on the other side we have vent holes. So I think this is where the exhaust from that fan is, and it blows through this hot end and cools everything off. Most 3D printers use a conventional axial fan, but I guess this is a little bit smaller and lighter. There's also a nice breakout board on the back here that'll allow you to easily swap components. They're using smaller connectors though. You can see they're really small, which will help contribute to the overall lightness and compactness of this unit. If we look at the hot end here, you can see it's just a simple aluminum design. On Creality's website, they claim this weighs 266 grams. Well, let's see if that's the truth. Okay, wow, that's, uh, that's way off. Maybe they're not counting certain other parts of it, like the CR touch, but I don't want to take away from this accomplishment too much because this is a very compact and lightweight extruder overall. And I think it's a step in the right direction for 3D printer design. All right, let's see what else we've got. Here's your obligatory bag of documentation that you'll never read. And it looks like you've got all the tools and extra parts in this bag too. Here's some test filament. Got some miscellaneous plastic pieces and cords. Here's your screen. It's the same as an Ender 3 V2 screen, but it's got a slightly different paint job. It looks like this printer comes mostly pre-assembled, and you've got a dual lead screw Z-axis. That just improves the overall accuracy of the 3D printer. There's a slight flat spot in this wheel because the wheels were a little bit over-tightened. Overall, it looks pretty good, and this was the last piece that was in the box. Here's the quick installation guide. So this walks you through assembling the printer. The writing on these instructions is really tiny, so it can be hard to read. So the first step is to attach this hot end using this bag of tiny screws. Oh nice! They've actually built in backwards compatibility here. One of the things I was worried about with this new design is that if you're having this new proprietary hot end set up, then it might be harder to mod because you won't have support for your older hardware. Well, Creality actually thought of that here. You can see these two holes. This is for the old style hot end mount. Just as an example, I've got this fancy new Fetus hot end that was designed to be a drop-in replacement for the Ender 3s. There's an issue with the clearance. It's bumping into this screw in the back. But if I install some brass standoffs, now I'm compatible with the older Ender 3 mods. I'm a big fan of these Clemco mounts because they allow you to install a J-head style hot end, like this one with the V6 hot end, or the Dragon or Rapido hot ends from Fetus. So if I can install this Clemco mount on here, that would be awesome. It really opens up a lot of doors for modability. And would you look at that, the Clemco mount still works. That's great. I think it's amazing that you can still keep all of your old mods even if you upgrade to this new system. So outstanding job with this backwards compatibility. It's going to make a lot of modders very happy. You also have this arm sticking out to the side, which you could use to bolt various accessories and fan shrouds onto the hot end. Alright, well enough about modding. I gotta build this thing first before I start modding it. When you attach the gantry crane to the base, both of these surfaces are machined flat. So you should get a really nice fit between the two parts. For this part of the assembly, I always move my printer off the edge of the table, and that way it's much easier to insert these screws from below. So to plug in the print head, you just pull these two tabs out to the side. It's just like a stick of RAM if you've ever built a computer. And then you push this in, and those automatically come in from the sides. One thing I'm kind of excited about is this expansion interface. It looks like it's an additional 24 volt plug, so you can plug all sorts of stuff into here, whether that's lights, additional fans, but for now I'm just going to leave it empty. Mechanically this thing's put together pretty well. It looks like they're using higher quality switches too. These are beefier than the normal switches that you'll find on a 3D printer. This bed is a little loose, so I need to go in here and tighten up the V-groove wheels. There's a little bit less clearance here than on the other Ender 3s. It might help to take off this screen to give yourself a little bit more space to work with over here. The wheels on my x-axis are a little bit tight, so I need to loosen those up. Another thing that modders will appreciate is they included a z-axis limit switch. In case you want to use a hot end that doesn't have a BL touch or a CR touch installed on it, 
you can always fall back on this z-axis limit switch. Here's Creality's version of a flex build plate. It's made out of spring steel and has a polycarbonate coating on the top. But if you prefer PEI, you can always take this one off and put a PEI bed on there. That's the nice thing about a magnetic build plate, is you can change surfaces relatively easy. Bed adhesion is a huge part of 3D printing, so having multiple surfaces to work with is only going to make your experience nicer. Even if you wanted to use a glass build plate, you could just throw this on here and hold it on with some clips. And since you have automatic bed leveling, it'll adjust to this new print surface. You can see this bed isn't super flat. If I push on the opposite corner, it lifts up about 2 millimeters. But since we have a BL touch, or as Creality likes to call it, the CR touch, we can do mesh bed leveling. And that way, even if this surface isn't perfectly flat, we'll still get a perfect first layer. This table's super flat, so if I rock the printer, it shouldn't move. But you can see it's moving a little bit. So that's just one of those Ender 3 things. If your printer isn't level, like this one, then you can loosen these two bolts and give it a couple taps. and then tighten those bolts back down. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with the build quality on this thing. It's a lot better than most of the Ender 3s I've worked with in the past. It seems like Creality is on an upward trend in terms of quality and features. Now it's time to turn it on and do some final calibration before we start printing. Whoa! <laughs> that took like 10 seconds to turn on. What was that about? I thought it was broken. According to the manual, the first thing you want to do is set up the bed leveling. So go to level, and it's activated the CR touch, so it's just going to come down and touch the bed. If you've ever worked with a BL touch before, you'll notice this is a lot quieter. Versus the BL touch, when it's working, it's constantly making clicking noises. And if you're doing a 16 point bed leveling, that noise can kind of get annoying. Now it's time for me to adjust the Z offset. I think that rattly noise on rapid Y moves is coming from the switch right here. So this can rattle around a little bit. It might be nice to add some kind of little damper in there. Or if they could put sensorless homing on this machine, that would just complete the whole package. But I'm guessing they're saving that for the Creality Ender 3 S2. Also note, we're using a full-size SD card on this machine. So this says filament has been used up. But it looks like there's filament in there. That might be something that just pops up the first time you use the printer. Ooh, and red filament's coming out. That means they test ran this from the factory. It's nice to know that they're taking quality control a little more seriously now. So it sounds like this thing's making kind of a little squidgy noise every time it's retracting. This isn't the first extruder that I've seen do that, so it's somewhat of a common issue. Well, this is about as exciting as it's going to get. I'm going to switch over to time-lapse mode so you don't have to watch this for three hours. I'm going to compare this print I just made to my two cat prints that I made on my Ender 3 V2s. But first I need to get this off the print bed. It sticks on there pretty good. Almost too good. Here they are side by side and you can immediately tell which one's better quality. The one on the right. See, there's way less layer lines. It's just a much nicer model. This is our Ender 3 V2 cat. There's just slight shifts in the layers that show up as horizontal lines through the part. If you look under the paw, there's some sagging there. Now let's look at the Ender 3 S1. Much fewer visible layer lines. I think the dual lead screw Z-axis really helps with that. So it just looks better all around. There's a little bit of stringing up here. Those can just be easily brushed off. And there's little bits of under extrusion here. I think that's because the retraction settings were set too high. This new extruder is really nice. I'm going to walk you through the process of changing the filament. So I've preheated my nozzle, I just hold down right here, pull the filament out, and I can take my new filament, put it through the filament runout detector, and then put my new filament in. That's super easy. I'm going to set the nozzle temperature to 210 Celsius so I can do my extrusion tests. This is 24 cubic millimeters per second, and it's starting to skip a lot of steps. It was performing pretty well up to 18 cubic millimeters per second, Really, I'd try to stick to the 15 cubic millimeters per second mark. Wow, these stick on there really good. Uh-oh. <laughs> um, that's a bit of an issue. I think I'm just going to switch over to this PEI bed instead. The quality of this benchy is pretty good. Keep in mind this is a sub one hour benchy, so I was going for speed. 
and it was still able to print it at pretty high quality. I definitely need to tune the retraction settings a little bit. The default profile in Prusa Slicer was set to 0.8 millimeters, which I think is a little bit too low. If I did a slow detailed print, it'd probably take two hours and it'd come out looking perfect, but I'm more interested in pushing the speed of this machine, because Ender 3s have had good quality for quite some time. But on this machine, I'm interested to see how much quality I can get at higher speeds. The wiring down here is very clean. It's a huge step up from earlier Ender 3 printers. They're finally using crimped ferrule ends for their terminal block connections. The motherboard fan has been beefed up. Also, there's this uh, Noctua fan that looks like it's just the right size to replace it. I promised myself I wouldn't do any mods until I finished this video. But if you are interested in seeing some Ender 3 S1 mods, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell, because I'm going to be modding the heck out of this printer in the next episodes. I couldn't find the voltage switch on this thing, but I just noticed that the switch is hidden back here. It's kind of covered up by this sticker, which is odd. Would you look at that? I'm set to the wrong power setting. Well, that explains why the bed was heating up so slow and it took like 8 seconds to power on. It's clear that Creality went all out in order to make the best Ender 3 possible. It's kind of hard to believe that this machine was built by the same company that made the old Ender 3s. But the family resemblance is there. I'm going to call this printer the Prusa Killer, because it seems like Creality went down the list of features on the MK3S and just copied all of the best things about it. There's very little that I dislike about this printer. I plan on addressing most of those issues in the videos to come. So if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? If you liked this video or found it useful, please consider subscribing and sharing it on social media. It really helps me out and will allow me to keep these independent 3D printer reviews coming. I'll leave links in the description if you want to pick up your own Ender 3 S1. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. You can gain access... Ooh, magnets. This drawer has little magnets in the back, so it'll automatically retain itself if you're moving your printer around.